Hello and welcome to the 650 kilometer review of the Ninebot Z10 or Segway Z10. Ninebot bolt Segway, as we most of us know now. So how have we been getting on with this wheel? Now, anyone has ever rung up and asked me about the Z10, which is everybody, um, I haven't got a lot good to say about it, to be fair. It looks amazing. It's pretty powerful and it goes fairly far. But there are a lot better wheels on the market as far as I'm concerned in terms of power delivery, power delivery, uh, range, speed, uh, and, but not looks. But yeah, I would have said this is the best looking wheel on the market. It is really nicely built. So that's something to say. That's some thumbs up there. It is really nicely built. It's been performing with no issues at all in terms of breakdowns or failures or anything like that. I haven't got a puncture, but it's more the way it rides. It is a really not a nice wheel to ride in comparison to other wheels out there. And I just have to be open and honest about that because that's just the way it is. Riding so many wheels, you can ride this anywhere and do more or less anything on it, but there are other wheels you can do it on that are considerably more comfortable to do it on. It's a bit of a strange one. Many people have it and absolutely love it. They, they say it's the best wheel they've ridden. So that's them. Uh, this is me giving my opinion on it. Uh, so I am sort of shooting it down a little bit and we sell them. So there we go. That's honesty for you. Some people love it. And the ones we've sold, they fed back, go and look at the stars on our website, the reviews they've left and they've all given it a thumbs up, etc., etc. So let's just touch on, because there's no point in going back through sort of old ground, really. The tire is, well, it's got a tendency, should we say, to follow tram lines. I've talked about this before. The wider your tire goes, the more chance you've got that of happening. And also the shape and the tread has an effect on that. Also what pressure you're running it at. Now you can mess around with that so you can inflate it so it's a lot harder and that reduces its surface area, you can do that, or you can run it softer. Now, whichever way you go, you're gonna affect your road and off-road riding. What I seem to find is the majority of people that shout about these are sticking to one type of train. On average, it's a broad statement, but on average tend to be like an 80-20 split or even 100% road. So there's that to be said about it. So you can set your pressure and then you can live by that pressure you've set. Now, I have actually got a much different mix. So I'm on road and then off road. It's not quite a 50-50, it's probably, I don't know, some split somewhere along the line, 60-40, something like that, 70-30, going road, then off road. Now, if I inflate the tire to its maximum pressure, it makes the road riding that little bit better, it stops the tram lining happening and it forcing you off in one direction. But then when you go off road, it jars your neck because it's so flipping solid. Now we've got some footage actually of me riding over some slabs concrete. Now when I watch that footage back, the sound that it comes from that. actually kind of gives you an insight and a feeling of what that must be like when you're on it, when the tire's inflated to its maximum PSI. It's quite a thumping sound. It's quite jarring. Um, so yeah, an off-road, it'd be ideal to have a softer tire. So you get a bit more bounce, takes more of the impacts, but then as soon as you hit the road, it's like, whoa, this thing wants to go where it wants to go, not where you want to go. Now a wheel that's similar is a 16X, but in the 16X review, I mentioned this, is almost like this, but it isn't. And what I mean by that is the 16X, you can easily pull back into line. It might go, oh, I'm just gonna wander slightly. And you go, no, you're not, you're coming this way. 
the way I want to go. And it'll go. I've been on this many times and it's just gone, I am going this way. And no matter what I do, I cannot get the flipping thing to go back on track. So that's an interesting one. And very often in those intricate instances, you haven't got loads of time to sort it out because you're going through difficult trails and difficult routes and terrains and things like that where you need it sorted right there and then. And most wheels you can just manhandle and force them to go the direction you want to go um, through skilled riding. Whereas this, I have been caught out several times where it's like, nah, you're going this way. And so from that point of view, it's a bit of a shaky machine for me because you never quite know what it's going to do, which can be fun and exciting. I think it was Jeremy Clarkson that said it's like having an axe murderer as a friend when he's driving a car. So a lot of the time they're absolutely fine, but then every now and again, it's got an axe out and it's just trying to kill you. So, or he's trying to kill you or she's trying to kill you. So it's a bit similar with that wheel. Let's go run back through. So I've kind of talked about the handling and stuff and we could argue and for, for the rest of time on adjusting tire pressures and things like that. Um, and I think I've already covered about riding it like a motorbike, perfectly capable of riding a motorbike, got no issues there. This definitely, as an underlying statement, is not as easy to ride as um, other wheels. So it depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for a fight, um, some of you might like do a bit of bull fighting, uh, might do the old run where the bulls chase after you and things like that. That's, that's a bit nice, a bit of UFC then this you know, might be right up the street. You might like a bit of that feistiness out of a wheel. If you're trying to have a nice ride and chat with some people as you're riding along and just sort of ride without really a care in the world, enjoy it, and not be constantly monitoring and making sure you're following exactly the right trail, then this might not be for you. There's one more example that I'll give, talking about the handling characteristics, is when they do logging in the forest, got these big massive trailers with huge wide wheels. I mean, we're talking that wide kind of thing, but the surface area dips and it's, it's probably that wide, but it's curved like that. Now, if you run down these things, you come off a trail, you jump down, you're going along and you hit these tracks. If this wheel touches the side of those, it's almost like exactly the right size. Imagine a bowling ball going down a trail that does this, and this is what this tries to do. And staying in the center of that is pretty flipping difficult. It makes you sweat, it's possible, it's totally possible to ride it, but it just makes you sweat a lot more. Whereas something like the M Super X, it just, you just point it and shoot and it goes there kind of thing, so yeah. The other designs, the lights coming on automatically, spot on. No issues with it whatsoever in terms of any failures. The um, foot plates, uh, there's no, I haven't had any issues. This one's actually covered in mud. I haven't had any issues with my feet slipping on it at all. It's been fine. The one thing I do find is that the ankle bone here, if you're wearing shoes, not boots, then you've got no padding here. Now in the box, it does come with extra padding. So if you wanted to fit it, probably advisable. Without, because this is dead flat, it's quite a large surface area that's flat. You're, if you're clamping it doing trails, then you'll find that your ankle smashes into the side of that. But again, that's conditioning really, but there's only so much conditioning you can do. So it depends how far you want to stretch that. Um, so that's the only thing. But otherwise it holds together really nicely. It feels incredibly well built. The rear mud guard holds up really well, it stops all the mud and junk and everything going all over you, so that's really good. That's work, tire hasn't worn, saying no punctures, nothing like that. Foot plates all fold up, work, no issues whatsoever. Rear light, love the rear light, I think it's absolutely brilliant where they've designed that. It looks sort of made bespoke for it and it's really, really bright and just the nice way it covers that whole lens. It's not like you can just see a little bulb in the middle, it's just the whole lens, it looks really nice, really well thought out. Trolley handle, 
Never had that have any problems at all. The pickup, you stop, pick it up, just works. It's worked for me every single time. The noises that go with it, the unlocking and locking noises, that's a nice little nod so you know exactly what's going on without having to just look at it and try and work out what is going on. Rubber flap, been absolutely brilliant. From day one I was talking about it, it was really, really nice the way you pull that out. Find a bit of moisture gets under there um, and the screws aren't stainless steel, so they rust a little bit, but I've had no issues with it charging or anything like that. It's just a screw near that area, um, so something to keep an eye on. The black finish underneath the handle does scratch up a little bit where your hand goes underneath, so especially if you've got a wedding ring or something like that, knocks it, that scratches up. So that, with use, sort of gets a bit scrappy after a while. The carbon fiber finish, the fake carbon fiber, has um, actually worked well. I've got no real, I've got a couple of scuffs and marks on it, but otherwise, wasn't me that did that, by the way. Um, otherwise, it works fine. Uh, lights, fine, the, the lights underneath have all worked. So it's a very dense, heavy unit. So carrying it, you don't want to carry it very far at all, like most of these bigger wheels. But it depends exactly what you're looking for. Say, so if you're splitting your ride in, if you're 50 50 splitting on a single journey, probably wouldn't recommend this to you. If you were sticking by road to work or whatever you're doing with it, or just off road, then yes, you can open yourself up to the possibility of riding this as a bit of a challenge. Um, so there's also another point anywhere outside the EU, or if you're grey importing them, you're not covered by any form of warranty which has been a constant thing. And we've only recently got these in. Um, but in the UK, we can actually fully warranty them because they've got a third party in their EU office, essentially, that uh, will uphold warranties for CE versions that have been bought uh, direct from us. So we won't handle any warranties outside, obviously, outside of the ones that we sell. But if you buy from us, there isn't this unknown of being able to have warranty and backup and parts because that's in place with a fairly quick turnaround. I think it's like a two week turnaround, something like that. They've got SLAs in place for that and they'll collect it from you. So we would um, give you the details and then you put a case in with them, the warranty company, and they sort it out. So that's with Segway products. So in that terms of things, it's actually a thumbs up from that. You've got this cover. So that is very neat. The motor delivers quite a substantial amount of power, to be fair. And um, we've got shots of it going up a very steep hill and quite hard to make out actually on video, but it is incredibly steep. And it'll take you up there. I did struggle with it because the foot plates are quite low. Now I've been used to riding the bigger higher up machines of late. And what it's kept doing was ditching me as I was going up, because obviously they're leaned for quite a lot as you're trying to accelerate this really steep hill. It, any little undulation in the ground, you'd hit it and it would knock it out from underneath you. Or tackling at the same time, it trying to tram line where this little groove is where rain had been running down this path. This was trying to follow that wherever that may take you. And I was trying to go sort of contrary to that. So it's a bit of a fight between the low foot plates and the way it tram lines. All round, it made it more difficult, but it will pull, so that motor will pull that power up there and my big fat arse up there as well. So. From that point of view, it's really good. What I found is the braking going down that really steep hill, which is probably beyond the manufacturer's recommended uh, climb and descent anyway. So it's kind of a bit of pie in the sky talk here. But if you were to hit extreme stuff, which they recommend you don't do, um, I found under braking, it was not as good. So actually it flick out from underneath. You couldn't brake enough to stop it gathering up momentum and keep going faster and faster and faster. And in one instance, I actually had to bail uh, which is the first time ever come off this in all the testing, because I thought, well, we'll push it and see what we can do. Managed to get uphill, but then coming down, it just did not want to break. So, and obviously I could go down with a bit of practice, but it shows that 
I, I jumped on the MCM5, which was filming both at the same time. And I was able to go up and down in almost a single instance. Going down, I came straight down without any issues. Um, going up took three or four attempts. Um, but I got up and down on the MCM5, no issues. This one going down, it would not supply me the braking I needed to keep it under control. So yeah, but the power of it is, is right up there. So it'll pull up a hill. With my weight, it was no, it was no real issue in terms of the performance of this. Just again, down to this tire. Um, so from that point of view, that's a thumbs up as well. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, really. And I wouldn't even say it's like Marmite. People say it's like Marmite, you either love it, you hate it. There are actually characteristics of this wheel. That it isn't just a preference, it's a reality, it's a fact. It doesn't ride as well as other wheels on the market. Yes, you can ride it everywhere. It just doesn't ride as well. It's more work to actually get this thing to do what you want it to do. If that's your bag, then do it. If it's not, then start looking elsewhere, especially if you're mixed terrain. That's the best advice I can probably give. If you're mixing it 50-50, I would look at something else. M Super X, massive amounts of power, huge range in comparison to this, uh, or the KS16X or KS18XL. Those sorts of wheels you want to be looking at at time of filming. Uh, go that way, something with a big tire, but not quite as wide. So in summary, this is a wheel that I recommend if you're doing 100% of road riding or 100% of trail riding then I could recommend it just with a caveat that this tire will take you places you didn't expect you were gonna go. So I hope that has been a helpful review. It is still ticking along fine. So from that point of view, reliability wise, no issues. A slight twist to this review is that I have ridden it all the way up to 650 kilometers. I'm gonna have someone else do the final 350 kilometers to see what they think of it because I want to detract myself from it slightly, step back and see what their impressions of it are. Now, the only wheel they've ever had is a 9-bot 1 E+. They are now switching to this, and we're going to see what their feedback is after riding it for 350 kilometers, and how they've got on it, and how they feel it is as essentially as their first proper wheel. Because I've got a suspicion that if this has been your only wheel, you know no different. And that might give a slightly different slant, a more positive slant, maybe, to the whole experience. So it's worth doing. And then we can give even broader opinion. So a thousand kilometers will come from elsewhere. But for me and this wheel and the 650 kilometers, it now comes to an end. And I can't say I'm sorry to see it go. Um, although it does look lovely. And as Mario pointed out, it looks very nice on the wall. Should you put it on a wall? Mmm, looks good. So I'll be saying goodbye for the Batmobile now. And Dan will be doing a video and see how he gets on with it a thousand kilometers. Well, I hope this has helped. If you're the hundred percenter who's going to ride this on the road or the hundred percenter is going to ride it on the off road and you don't mind a bit of a fight, then this could be the wheel. Don't overlook it. Go and have a look at the videos we've already done on it. Go and look at our website, speedyfeet.co.uk. Check out our Twitter account, Instagram account, YouTube account. Hit subscribe, follow wherever you can, comment, Facebook page, all that sort of business. And uh, I'll see you on the 1,000 kilometer review.